Hello and welcome to the Tracy Sandler Show brought to you by FIVO. I am your host, Tracy Sandler. Very excited to have the New Orleans Saints team reporter, Aaron Summers, join me here on the podcast. Aaron, we were supposed to be doing this from Irvine, but due to a variety of reasons, mainly many of the 49ers being injured, uh, the joint practices between the Saints and the 49ers were canceled. So we are not in Irvine, but welcome to the show. You are a war- road warrior. I want you to start by telling everybody kind of what your schedule has been the last month and a half. Well, you mentioned it is Saints team reporter, but I'm also the Pelicans team reporter. So okay. with the two teams, there is mm-hmm. often a lot of crossover. And I started on the road with the NBA Summer League in Vegas early July, and I'm, I'm still on the road. It's going to be a total of 41 days on the road before I get back to New Orleans. But yeah, thank you for having me on the pod. And I do wish we could meet in person because everyone's favorite thing is joint practices. I know we were looking forward to it here. The players were looking forward to it. It's when you really get a real idea of of where you're at because you get the ones on ones action. You see more than what they actually show you in preseason games. So you get a better grasp of, of where you're at, a better measuring stick. So disappointing but understandable. And Kyle Shanahan loves joint practices. Loves, loves, loves them. So for him to cancel was definitely a big deal. But as of course reported, and and I personally reported, and you probably heard everywhere that last week, the 49ers had 23 players out with injuries. They've had a bunch of those guys back out on the field. They lost two guys in the preseason game. One of them being Kalia Davis, a defensive lineman who they were really excited about, or still really excited about, um, but was having a really good camp here in his third year. And so that was a really tough loss. So injuries have been happening all over. I have a question for you because this is something I think about every year. So obviously I cover the Fort Anders, so I'm very ingrained in this team. And it feels like, and it's still like this every year, that they have so many injuries and they have so many injuries more than any other team. But really, is that just because I'm so ingrained in this team? Like, the Saints, are they dealing with a similar kind of situation? We have had a lot of soft tissue injuries. I personally think it has something to do with the fact that we're here on the West Coast. It's not as hot. So the players aren't necessarily hydrating and preparing the same way they would if they were in New Orleans in that heat and the humidity. It was a feels like temperature of 118 in New Orleans today. So that is very different to have to play in. And as this the camp has gone on, you know, we've had some players that have been dealing with different injuries, you know, hamstrings, groins, things like that, that, you know, aren't going to keep them out of the season, but definitely will keep them out for a couple of days here at camp. Hamstrings for the 49ers seem to be the new high ankle sprain. There was a time a couple years ago on this team that high ankle sprains were all the rage. Everybody was getting themselves some sort of high ankle sprain and the degree of severity, it varied. So sure. some people were out like four to six weeks. Some people were only out a couple weeks, but that was like this training camp. Hamstrings have been the injury of camp. Also, Ricky Pearsall, the 49ers first round draft pick wide receiver has been dealing with the shoulder injury though. He also at one point had a hamstring issue. He had a hamstring issue to start the season. So they've been kind of all the rage here at uh, training camp. It's very interesting because there's that balance, right? You know, guys have got to get in shape and they got to get ready for the season. You don't want to push them so hard that they have a major injury, but it's almost impossible to get through it without anything. And any NFL player will tell you from week one to week 18 and beyond, you're going to, at the end, you're dealing with something. You're not healthy past week one. So you're always going to be dealing with something. So since there are no joint practices, it changes things. All of a sudden, the Sunday night game becomes perhaps actually a little bit more interesting than it may have been in terms of what we'll see from the ones. How much playing time do you believe the ones will get uh, from the Saints side? The Saints really kept practice the same as far as what we would have seen with them going up against the 49ers yesterday. Mm -hmm. And today was a lot of teamwork, a lot of situational stuff, red zone work, hurry up. Uh, It looked like a scrimmage. They had the Mm -hmm. refs out there. So they did get a lot of the same work. However, you're not going up against an unknown and a defense that doesn't know your call. So I think that we will see a lot of the starters Sunday just to continue to get comfortable with this new Kubiak offense, with him Mm -hmm. as the play caller, the communication and the flow of that for 
the offense here. And then I know the defensive line has been throwing some different things out there. They're still looking at some depth in some different areas. So I think we'll see the starters for maybe a series or two, and then it will be a lot on the backups from there. Thursday's practice in Santa Clara was very similar. It was one of their longer practices of camp and same kind of thing. A lot of scrimmages, a lot of red zone, all of that. I'm curious to see. So on Monday, when Kyle Shanahan spoke to us, he said he might play some of the starters depending kind of how the week goes, how the injuries go. We will talk to him again on Friday. We're recording this Thursday. You guys will get it live Friday morning. We'll when it will come out. But we'll talk to Kyle Shanahan later Friday afternoon and get an idea. I am I am very curious. The 49ers have a couple of things going against the ones. They're going to have to play a little bit. But this one of them, I would say the biggest one of them, and the one that is not getting as much attention as the other one. I'm like speaking in riddles here, so I'm just going to go ahead. <laughs> They've got Trent Williams, offensive lineman, left tackle, holding out. They have Brandon Ayuk holding in. The Ayuk situation is getting the majority of press, the majority of attention. Oh. The Trent Williams situation, in my opinion, is actually a much bigger deal because the 49ers are worse with Brandon IU. I, I do at this point kind of think they're going to figure it out. They're worse with Brandon IU, but they can win with Brandon, Brandon IU. They cannot win without Trent Williams. Proven last season when he was out three games and they lost all three of them. But he's he is the stalwart of that offensive line. He is the guy that protects Brock Purdy. He's holding out. So I bring that up partly to say – it will be interesting to see how much time Brock and the ones get because they have to be really careful because you can't, they have seen losing Brock Purdy is not an option for them. And there's a QB two battle going on between Josh Dobbs and Brandon Allen. And it is a battle. I think Brandon Allen's winning it, but it's a battle that's also showing you really don't want Brock Purdy to get injured. So I think that's going to be kind of interesting uh, from the offensive side of the 49ers, but you brought up Kubiak and the Niners have a new coordinator as well, but I'd love to start by hearing about Kubiak and old friend of, old friend of the team, uh, how that's yeah. going and what has changed. Well, he's been getting glowing reviews from the players. It started, you know, he jumped right in at off season workouts, OTAs, rookie mini camp. He has been here from day one, working with the team quarterback, Derek Carr, participated in, in all of the off-season work as well, just to try to get ahead of the eight ball a little bit. It's mm -hmm. been good for this offense to start fresh together. Last year, quarterback Derek Carr came in and had to learn everything on his own. But this year, everybody's learning it at the same time. So I think that's helping them kind of come together a little bit more, build that chemistry because they're leaning on each other to get through and, and understand what they're supposed to do. But what's been really interesting about the way Kubiak is teaching is every single coach on the offensive side is teaching things the exact same, which may sound crazy that that's something to bring up, but it's not always the case. Your running back coach, your wide receiver coach, they'll teach things. Their techniques will be a little bit different. Their verbiage might be a little different. If you ask, you know, a, a wide receiver coach versus your, your coordinator, a question, it might be worded and sound a little bit different, it might give you a slightly different advice, but everything sounds the same and is the same, whether it's, it's Kubiak, it's Janoko, the quarterback coach. And I think that that is also extremely helpful when you're learning something new. Carr has spoken about just how that helps everybody kind of you know, row in the same direction. And if you're doing that, then eventually you're going to get to where you need to go. And he said, hopefully it's sooner rather than later, but they have made things very simple in their way that they're teaching. And the players love what it looks like on the field. You know, we didn't have a lot of play action last year, didn't have a lot of motion in the offense. And those are two huge components, things that Carr does well with. Play action is has been great for him historically. And to be able to have that to, to lean into and use a lot more is going to be different. It's going to, the Saints, the offense is going to look extremely different, but I think it's going to also help some of the playmakers and, and lean into what some of, of their weapons can do and how versatile some of their players are. How have you seen it manifest in what you're seeing on the field? Yeah, it's funny because our defense says they hate it. And for so long, it's, they had 18 years of the same offense under then Sean Payton. And he 
pass it on to Pete Carmichael. So it was the same system for so long. The defense knew what to expect. Now the defense is having something different thrown at them every single day with the mo- the pre-snap motion. They don't necessarily know what's coming. And I think that's what's really cool is everything looks the same to start, but then it can turn into something completely different. And so it's keeping the defense on their toes. They can't really tell what's coming. You know, they can see what personnel is in there. But other than that, you know, there are a lot of options. And I think that's what this team likes. It's simple. You know what your your starting point is. And then, mm-hmm. you know, if this, then that. And it happens really quickly. Um, and it's got a lot of different wrinkles that are thrown in there. A lot of different players that are getting utilized in different ways. I think it's going to be great for somebody like Alvin Kamara, who is a versatile running back and, and a pass catcher. He's Mm -hmm. going to be used a lot more, I think, in this offense. And then somebody like Taysom Hill, who, shoot, we just call him a football player because he literally lines up all over the field. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know what defenses are going to do when they see him on the field because you don't know if he's lining up or in as a tight end, a a Mm -hmm. fullback, a running back, a receiver. Sometimes he's taking a direct snap. He's in like a quarterback. So that is going to be pretty interesting to see how many different ways he's utilized. Funny because the 49ers have two players not that are very versatile, but not quite that versatile. Like you're not going to see Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel line up as a tight end, but they're very versatile. But that is the thing right. with Taysom Hill. And I do always love it that he's called a football player. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 49ers have a new coordinator since we were talking about new coordinators and defense is being surprised. Their new coordinator is Nick Sorensen, uh, who you know did his first game on uh, Saturday night in Nashville on the field. Uh, they seem to be adjusting well to him. He's been here a while. He's been with the team for quite some time, so it seems to be a really good fit. But I think these are games, these preseason games, it's preseason for them too. When they're yeah. in a new position with a new group of guys, how do you communicate with your players? What, how do you communicate with other coaches? So I, there's always that joke, it's preseason for all of us, but it, it really is. And I think these games, especially this game without the joint practices, I think will be interesting for for both of these coordinators. So it's going to be kind of fun to see who uh, has kind of, I'm going to ask two questions. Who has stood out to you in camp? And then who has surprised you? Have there been any late round draft picks that you found surprising? Any veterans that have taken the next step? Any undrafted free agents? Who, Who are some of those guys that you're going to be looking at on Sunday? Yeah, well, our first round pick in Taliesse Fuaga out of Oregon State was a tackle. He played every single snap there at right mm-hmm. tackle and has been moved to the left side. From day one, he started on the left side and he looks fantastic. I, he's got a big body. He's smart. He's adjusting extremely well to that change. And everybody mm-hmm. around him is giving him just glowing reviews. Um, you know, our center, Eric McCoy, said he's the best rookie that he's ever come across and McCoy's been playing for a while. So to have those kinds of remarks from some of the vets on our team, Mm -hmm. it's been pretty cool to see. And he's lining up against defensive end Carl Granderson and Chase Young, and they're not making it easy on him and he's holding his own. So I think that's been a pleasant surprise for everybody that as a rookie, he is that ready to go, especially after changing positions Mm -hmm. or sides of the line. And then somebody that's really stood out in this year, all of camp, I think, has been our cornerback, Alante Taylor. Last year, he made the move from outside corner to slot or nickel, and they threw him in there as the starter from the very beginning of the season, and it was tough for him. He really mentally had a hard time accepting that that was where he should be playing. Anytime he made a mistake, he questioned him being there and and said he wanted to go back outside. But this year he's lining up inside again. He's got a kind of a fresh approach to things. He's being a little bit easier on himself, getting himself some grace. And he Mm -hmm. is just killing it out there. Every single day, the battle between him and wide receiver Chris Olave is it's must watch the one-on-ones and they're definitely making each other better. And Taylor, somebody that I think is going to do some big things this season. Fantastic. Well, the 49ers, as I mentioned earlier, have not gotten much of a look at their first round draft pick. Ricky Pearsall in minicamp with an eight blue, no contact jersey because of shoulder issue. 
He came in, as I mentioned, on the NFI list with a hamstring issue, and then the shoulder issue was reactivated. He was mm -hmm. a couple of days. So they haven't gotten much of a look at him, but when you talk about corner, um, they're talking about Bernardo Green. He's been very impressive because he went out to Yamador Lenore, who's really good on the outside and really good on the inside. And going into the season, and probably still a little bit going into the season, there was this question, is it going to be you know, him on the outside, moving inside when needed, and then they put Isaac Edom on the outside, and or is uh, Lenore going to stay on the outside as a starter, or will he be full-time inside? There's so many questions about this. And that will probably be for a while, but Renardo Green has a similar ability and a similar skill set. And the interesting thing to take that down both inside and outside, it's really not an easy thing to do no. when you're doing it all the time. And so it's kind of interesting that they have two people that can do it. And I think he's been very impressive for the 49ers. I will say when we spoke to him right after he was drafted, he mentioned a number of times that he was a dog. And it feels that he's correct. I mean, he said it. Multiple times. And so I remember John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan saying in the press conference after this, they were told the same thing by Ricardo Green. But he's improving it. So he's been really fun to watch. And that is an area where they really need a depth and they really need to improve. Essentially, their cornerback and beyond position. They have an incredible corner. John Lenore and Lenore Lenore Lenore. But they have some real issues with CB3 and after that. So it's a place where they've really been able to up their game. So to speak. And then I'm sure we'll see a lot of them on Sunday night and it's been fun to watch is Cody Schrader. So with Christian McCaffrey being out, and he's a running back, with Christian McCaffrey mm -hmm. being out, we've seen a lot of the other guys. Elijah Mitchell is now dealing with something. We've seen a lot of Jordan Mason who is making a strong case to be RB2 on this team. But then we've seen a lot of Cody Schrader. And again, an undrafted free agent. They drafted a running back who's been hurt with. And so he has been out. So Cody Schrader is going to be a fun one to watch. And he's one of these running backs. He kind of reminds me in terms of the character of Moore. Um, I'm a Michigan guy. I went to Michigan. And so <laughs> it's been really fun to watch. And that's what I think becomes cool about these preseason games. And this is something that I kind of want to talk about that I think sometimes people forget. Like preseason football is not fun. Preseason football is not the best. But preseason football is a chance for many of these guys to prove they deserve a spot on the roster or on the practice squad. And that makes these games for them really, really important. And I would kind of just love your perspective, especially as a team reporter, kind of spending time with these guys and, and seeing them on the field, kind of what that feels like and, and how you see the game in that way. Well, first of all, it comes down to being available and being able to play, which mm -hmm. if you're dealing with any types of injuries, unfortunately, the coaching staff can't evaluate you. So you have to start right there. You have to be ready. You have to be available. And anytime that the ball comes to you, you have an opportunity. You got to step up. And we've seen that from several players so far this training camp. There are a couple fun storylines that we've been following with uh, wide receiver Samson Nakua, who is actually the older brother of Puka Nakua. Mm -hmm. We called him you know, a week and a half ago and signed him after we had a couple injuries. We had some attrition in the wide receiver room. And he's really stood out. He had a big play in this past Saturday's game against the Cardinals. And I got to talk to him yesterday. And he is so excited, so fun to talk to. He said that he'd kind of stepped away from football over the past couple of years because he hadn't really found, you know, his place. And he saw what his brother did this past season, how well he played. And he thought, man, I taught that guy everything he knew. So mm -hmm. I still have to be able to play. Like, I'm going to try this thing again. So he stopped. He was going on a road trip around the country, stopping in different states and stuff. He, he ended up going back home. He started working out with Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua and getting, and getting back in shape and ready to go. And, you know, he got a phone call and he showed up ready and he has taken advantage of every opportunity that's come his way. But it, that's been a fun storyline. And somebody that's from – the San Francisco area, uh, Rajon Wright, he cornerback, um, was in Last Chance U, played for okay. Laney Community College, and they kind of highlighted him a little bit on that show. He's hopped around a couple places, but you know he's really excited for this game coming up this weekend because he gets to go back home and didn't know if he was ever going to make it. Um, he's kind of fought his way from being at Laney to going to 
you know, a couple different stops in college. And now he's, he's here. He's kind of was on a practice squad last year and he's hoping to make the team this year, but it's always fun to hear, you know, people's stories and how they, they get these opportunities. We have a tight end, Michael Jacobson, that he was overseas playing basketball in Ukraine and was watching the NFL every night until 4 a.m. And he's like, I really feel like I can do this. Like, I really like, you know, I really like basketball, but I really think I would be a good football player. And so, you know, he's, he made the switch and now he's, I mean, you will definitely notice him out there. He's six, seven, the tallest guy on the field, (laughs) but he's out here making plays. So you little, you know, little stories that pop like that are, are kind of fun. And you start to root for some of these guys, but it's tough. There's only 53 spots and, 16 practice squad positions as well. But, you know, it's not just a, an audition for the team that you're at at training camp with now, but you can do something big during the game, then somebody else might pick you up as well. Yes, absolutely. And that's the thing. These are, that's a very good point. They're kind of auditions generally, mm-hmm. because especially like on the Niners, this is a team that's like pretty much set, but there are places. But for some of these players, yeah, it's the opportunity to be like, okay, I may not end up here, but. There are a number of other teams that need X, Y, and Z. So I think that, that, that's a really good point. I think the positions kind of to watch for San Francisco, in my humble opinion, uh, will be wide receiver and offensive line. I mentioned the absence of Trent Williams. Um, and uh, I meant to mention Dominic Cooney, who, has be, who was a later round draft pick, who has really surprised in camp on the line. And he's been incredible. And he's very likely going to end up as a starter. And he will be a super fun story because it was one of the people that you kind of felt like, Oh, they'll develop him over the next year and they'll see what happens. But he's been really an incredible story. So it'll be fun to watch him. But those are two areas that the line is getting a lot of reps. There are certain people, especially Jalen Morgan, a lot of reps in Trent Williams's absence. Can they take advantage of that? And then the wide receiver group, assuming Brandon Ayuk is there and assuming they keep six, there's, there's some wiggle room at the end. And we talked some of the guys, I think there are a couple people that could end up on the practice spot squad that get activated on game day, but that wide receiver position, it's interesting. In some ways they were light on wide receivers because they didn't have IU and one of their rookies, Jacob Cowing has hamster, had a hamstring injury. And then of course, Ricky Pearsall. But on the other side of that is they're kind of heavy on wide receivers in terms of who's going to get that final position. So sure. if you it's going to be IU, Debo, Juwan, Jennings, and Ricky Pearsall. Obviously, there's a couple other positions there. So I think someone to watch is Ronnie Bell, go blue, but a guy who was really good the first half of the season, kind of fell off a little bit last year. He's been having a good camp, a decent preseason game. Of course, Jacob Cowling, the draft pick. They're at Chris Conley, who really good in the Fred Taylor is back, and he looks like he would be their punt returner. So how does that work? So, of course, I would love your opinion before I let you go. The new kickoff, what do you think? Were you like, what is happening here? And, and what <laughs> Yeah, it's been wild. I remember I was watching the kickoff um, with Derek Carr on the sideline of our last game, and I was about to interview him, and and he was just it was kind of like very distracted by what was happening. And he's like, this is just so weird. Like I cannot wrap my head around this. I just look so different. And I mean, we're all creatures of habit and you throw something out there that we've seen from the very beginning of football and change it so drastically. And nobody knows what it's going to look like per se. Nobody knows how they need to line up opposite it. And, you know, I've seen, all of these teams with two returners, it's not, you don't necessarily have to have two players back, but most teams are doing that. So that's a a little different wrinkle. And then just the fact that people can't move until the ball is in the receiver's hand, the returner's hands is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think, so the goal was to, you you know, create more returns, possibilities for more touchdown scoring plays, on a kickoff, but the place they're going to start probably from like the 35 every offensive drive. So I think there's just going to be more scoring in general because most of the returners are at least getting to the 35 before they get touched. Um, So the field position that these teams are going to get to start with is going to be so much better than we've seen in the past, which I think will in in turn lead to 
just more scoring in general. It's going to be really interesting to see how it actually plays out because you know how people are in the preseason. They like to hold some of their cards close to their chest and not show you everything. So I don't know if we're getting a real look at, at what it's going to be like and the different ways people are going to try to manipulate what they do on the field. I think it's going to be one of the greatest stories of week one. Like we'll be kind of the most, interesting. what do different people do? How, how do they utilize it? How do they not utilize it? Cause there can be an argument, argument made for that too, that if you kick it out mm-hmm. of bounds and start the 30, are you better off doing that? Or are you better off with this new rule, having someone potentially run back step down for a game? And step down the end of the game? So I think there'll be a lot of gamesmanship there. And coordinators, uh, the special teams coordinator, Brian Schneider has said all throughout training camp, this is going to be a year No one is going to have to figure it out really until the end of the year. And if we have to figure it out then, and then, of course, we'll see what they do. With it. So we have a Sunday night football game uh, waiting all day for Sunday night on Sunday. Erin, please, first yes. of all, thank you for me. This was super fun. Uh, yeah. Love your perspective. Uh, but let every know, everyone know where they can find you. Yeah, you can follow me at Erin E. Summers on X. That is where we are there. And then it's EE Summers on Instagram. But obviously, you can head to NewOrleansSaints.com. All of our coverage from camp, um, practice, training camp practices, post game interviews, the game, you know, we have everything there. So, yeah, that's where you can find us. Fantastic, you guys. I am on X. I'm getting used to whether or not every week I'm no. like, do we call it Twitter this week? Am I calling it X this week? Sometimes this show is often twice a week. Sometimes I mix it up just in, in the same week, but we'll go with X since you use X uh, at Tracy FGSN on Instagram at Tracy Sandler. And also guys, don't forget to follow our brand Instagram at fangirl sports network. We do a fun, lot of really, really fun content over there. If I do say so myself. So I think you guys will enjoy it. Uh, we are brought to you by bet online. We are brought to you by FIVO. And if you like what you heard, and I know you did, please make sure to give us a five-star rating and a super positive review. With that, I will talk to everybody next time. And Aaron, I will see you in just a couple of days. Bye, all. Can't wait.